You've probably heard this, Portland being called Bike City USA. But as more and more people are taking to two wheels, more are getting stolen. Yeah, the number of bike thefts in the city has doubled in the past six years. And experts say there's a ring of thieves who are making money doing it. KGW investigator Nina Melhoff tracked down one of those alleged thieves to find out what happens to your bike when it gets taken. Nina? Well, over 2,100 bikes were reported stolen last year in Portland. In reality, it's probably a whole lot more than that. It's so bad, police are starting up a bike theft task force, and we hit the streets to investigate how thieves are making money off your stuff. Yeah, he's got like a milk crate full of tools. Now he's, now he's hacking at the lock. I can hear him. The videos are all over the internet. Vigilante bike lovers confronting suspected thieves. It's no different in Portland. What you guys doing? Go away, dude. Yeah, go away, yo. Why? This amateur video was taken under the Hawthorne Bridge. So this is a packet that we were given by the Portland Police Bureau. Western Bike Works in Northwest Portland keeps up on the most active thieves. This is kind of the main dude that they've told us his nickname was Kingpin. He's 47-year-old transient Leroy Parsons, in and out of jail, convicted of 15 felonies and 22 misdemeanors for meth, stolen bikes, burglary, sex abuse, and robbery. He's well known to police as the kingpin. He definitely comes in contact with a lot of stolen bikes, that's for sure. He's involved in some, some big way down here. Officer Sanders says the money goes to pay for drugs, and his theory goes thieves clip the locks or strip parts off a well-locked bike. It's hidden away while the serial number and other markings are taken off. Then a second-tier person buys it to sell the parts or builds a whole different bike with mixed parts. Police believe sometimes there's a third tier of runners who take stolen bikes to other cities to sell. They suspect with Parsons street connections and bike knowledge, the kingpin could be the second tier. They're not getting caught that often. Their friends aren't getting caught that often. And lo and behold, it's actually, I mean, I hate to say it on camera, but it's relatively simple to steal bikes and sell them. Bike Portland blogger Jonathan Moss says it's important not to cast blame on all transients with bikes, but he hears growing frustration that something be done from theft victims who've recovered their bikes at these homeless camps. People seeing power tools, all kinds of bikes and different paraphernalia that makes it look like bikes are being repainted and sanded down. These are things that people usually and I think reasonably associate with chop shops. One of those suspected chop shops is under the east side of the Hawthorne and Morrison bridges. And guess who we found there? Somehow I became the kingpin of bike thieves. Leroy Parsons may be homeless, but he wears several watches, has a smartphone, even an iPad. His passion for the bicycle runs deep. This one was a bike I had for two years. And he says he owns several free and clear. Police say they've arrested him upwards of 10 times with stolen ones. Talkative and even friendly, Parsons admits he is a good thief, but he doesn't steal bikes. And I don't steal from bike shops because I like bikes. So I do it by trading and buying all my parts on my own. You know? But then they see it and say, like, oh, it's a nice bike. You're homeless. You can't have nice things. Why can't I? But we learned that hours after this interview, Parsons was arrested again for meth and possession of an expensive stolen bike. It's a contradiction of himself he makes in the same sentence. If you're dumb enough to leave a $2,500 road bike on the back of your car with no lock, I'm dumb enough to take it. I'm sorry. It's not going to pass someone up. We saw dozens of bikes, whole toolboxes, and scattered parts all around him. Parsons denies knowing anyone who's part of a bike theft ring on the streets. He says the public is too quick to judge. You know, people walk by and only see a little smidgen of a picture, and they don't stick around and see what the bike looks like an hour later. You know what I'm saying? Or, oh, he's just tripping the bike. No, he's taking the broken parts off and the new parts on. And thieves have all the right tools now that instead of taking the whole bike, they know what parts are worth the most. Invest in one of these U-locks. They're the best kind you can get. But even still, people are coming back and finding something jammed in the lock. So when you come with your key, it doesn't work anymore. And when you leave your bike to figure out how to get it unlocked, all the parts are gone. Back to you. How frustrating is that? Looks like that bike task force will definitely have its uh, work cut out for it. Thank you, Nina.